Good evening, church. Merry Christmas. We are so happy that you have chosen to spend your Christmas Eve with us here at Northridge Community Church. For our church members, thank you for joining us. We miss you. Merry Christmas. And for those of you who may be joining us for the first time, or maybe you join us from time to time throughout the year, we are just so blessed to have you with us. We pray that this evening is a blessing to you, but more importantly, that it is honoring to God and glorifying to him because he deserves all of our praise. This first song that we're going to share together in worship just describes how incredible, amazing, marvelous, and wonderful our God is. There aren't enough words to describe him. There aren't good enough words to describe him, and yet we try. And so this evening we pray that you will worship with us in, his, in the house of the Lord and in your homes tonight. Merry Christmas. promised us that he would be a counselor, a mighty God and the Prince of Peace. He promised us that he would be a father and he would love us with a love that would not see. tried him and I found his promises are true. He's everything he said that he would be. The finest words I know could not begin to tell just how much Jesus Everything he's promised. 
As we've moved through these weeks of Advent as a church family, we have taken some time each week to light a different candle. On the first week of Advent, we lit the hope candle. And then on the second week, we lit the peace candle. On the third week, we lit the joy candle. And on the fourth week, we lit the love candle. Tonight, we will light the fifth candle. The fifth and final candle of Advent represents Jesus Christ. This candle signifies the ultimate reason for our Christmas journey the baby Jesus, God's only son, the savior of the world. Jesus is truly the reason for and the meaning of Christmas. And he is the source of all the gifts we've discovered on this Advent journey. Hope, love, joy, and peace. Celebrate the birth of Jesus. The waiting is almost over. The Messiah is coming. And even as we celebrate his arrival in our world, our anticipation grows and we continue to live with longing and expectation for his second coming, when his work will be complete and all the earth will be restored. Yet even now, on the eve of Jesus' birth, we rejoice. Christ has come and he will come again.
What a beautiful song. Amen. As we approach the end of this 2020, this year that has been unlike any other year, we find ourselves in this Christmas season, again, a Christmas season unlike any other. Many might be feeling the need for refuge, and the need for rest, the need for new beginnings. And so just as we reflect on that song we just sang together, let's have a prayer together. Dear God, I come to you right now on behalf of my friends and family at Northridge, God. And I lift up a prayer to you for us, for our souls, for us as a church, God. Many may be feeling that we need refuge from the journey. God, we need rest for us who feel weary. God, we need to know that our past can be forgiven and this can be the dawn of new beginnings, God. Just as we sang, for darkness cannot bind the heart of one who's been set free. God, we long to be set free and we pray for our souls to be set free. At this time, God, while many things have been stripped away, God, I just pray that as a church we come to see you in this story in a fresh new way. May we use this opportunity of change to just look to the cradle, to look to the manger and know that there's hope in the manger as we just sang, hope of life forever. And God, as we sang, I pray as a church that we will continue to just leave our every need in the manger. God, I pray that this Christmas, Christmas 2020, will give us a new and refreshed sense of what that manger means to us. So God, continue to be with us as we, as we move into 2021, God. We, we prayed for hope and we know that our hope is in you. Our hope is in the manger, came to earth as man. And God, I pray that we place our hope in that manger from this Christmas and beyond. I pray all these things in Jesus' name. Amen.
Amen. At this time, we're going to watch a quick video clip that is going to hopefully um, remind us of not only the importance of the cradle, but also the importance of the cross. We look to the baby Jesus knowing that Lent is coming when we will wait in anticipation for what Jesus will do for all of us, what he has done. And uh, we know that Easter um, he will come again, and we just look forward ahead to that part of the story. Um, we're so lucky to be on this side of history. And so as we watch this video, just reflect on those things and anticipate what God will do. Good evening. I want to share with you tonight from Isaiah chapter 9, beautiful scripture that is the prophecy of the greatest event there ever was. The people walking in darkness have seen a great light on those living in the land of deep darkness. A light has dawned. You have enlarged the nation and increased their joy. They rejoice before you as people rejoice at the harvest, as warriors rejoice when dividing the plunder. For as in the day of Midian's defeat, you have shattered the yoke that burdens them, the bar across their shoulders, the rod of their oppressor. Every warrior's boot used in battle and every garment rolled in blood will be destined for burning, will be fuel for the fire. For to us a child is born." To us a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulders, and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the greatness of his government and peace there will be no end. He will reign on David's throne and over his kingdom, establishing and upholding it with justice and righteousness from that time on and forevermore. The zeal of the Lord Almighty will accomplish this. What a powerful prophecy. And we're going to reflect for a moment on that prophecy, but also the fulfillment of the Christmas account. But it's hard to believe, friends, that it's Christmas Eve 2020. But, and what a year it's truly been. A year for most of us like no other. Certainly each and every one of us can stand to rediscover Christmas its purpose, its value, its definition, its meaning. The Christmas story, both the prophesied and fulfilled, are powerful accounts, filled with wonder and miracles and real life. The story of the coming Jesus to the earth is the most wonderful gift of all, the gift of a Savior through which we receive the gift of eternal life. As we've walked through the various parts of the Christmas story over these past four weeks, we experienced the intersection of Jesus and the lives of real people who played a role in his arrival. 
And we've seen that the hope and the peace and the joy and the love that he brought into the lives is in a very real way our experience today as it was to those over 2,000 years ago. And in our short time together tonight, we want to briefly trace our way through portions of this Christmas story once again, highlighting all that it means that Christ has come and all that we can do is rediscover about Christmas in him. On our first Sunday of Advent, we talked of finding hope in our uncertainties. When uncertainty surrounds us, the promise of Christ fills us with hope to carry on. In the worst sufferings, atrocities, and catastrophes of human history, there has always remained a flicker of hope. Throughout the history of the Jewish people, there was the promise of restoration and healing, blessing through the Messiah. And even though time dragged on, century after century, hope was kept. And two of the righteous and devout Jews, Simeon and Anna, both lived expectantly and faithfully, and they got to encounter the baby Jesus in their old age. They had lived long, difficult lives and had known loss and disappointment, but they had not abandoned hope. Their hope was a willingness and a desire to believe beyond what their present circumstances and reality were. And they embraced the moment of hope fulfilled with worship and joy when they witnessed the baby Jesus in the temple, knowing without a doubt that this was the promised Messiah. As Cam has already said, this has been a tough year. The year, the kind of year that threatens to extinguish our flame of hope. But I want to encourage us each one tonight, whatever you are facing, embrace and rediscover the hope that the Christ child provides. The hope of salvation, of restoration and healing. The hope of his continued work that he will one day complete in our bodies, our souls, and in our world. As we come to humbly worship Jesus, we can find the renewal of our hope, his hope within us, and the strength to carry us forward. Our prayer for you is found in Romans 15. May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace as you trust in him so that you may overflow with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Our second week of Advent, we talked about finding peace in our struggles. The struggles that we experience, not just through this year, but through other times as well, are real. They're genuine. But the peace of Christ... It transcends, it actually overcomes, even in our darkest days. To the shepherds, the announcement came in the dark of the night with the words, don't be afraid, because of course they were afraid. And you and I would be afraid of as well, because, because they were human. There was much in the world that causes them fear and can cause us fear as well. There's so much that happens that we struggle to understand. For the shepherds, that included why these magnificent, terrifying heavenly beings were showing up in the middle of the night sky. For us, it's the normal pressures and disappointments and uncertainties of our frailty in a broken world. And that's true even without the rolling events of this global pandemic. But in Jesus, we understand that he is the Prince of Peace. And he has arrived on this earth as the angels proclaimed in Luke chapter 2. Do not be afraid. Do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all the people. Today, in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. Suddenly, a great company of the heavenly host appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace to those whom his favor rests. A peace. In the Hebrew, it's shalom. It's a Jewish concept of, of fullness, of completeness, of wholeness. 
And that's what's available to you and I. It's a peace where the outcome is a restored relationship with God himself. It's a peace that settles our souls and, and regardless of the storms that we may experience around us. May we claim these powerful words from Philippians 4 that the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and my heart with, and our minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. I don't know if you remember, but in our third week of Advent, I remember it particularly well. I spoke to the fact that we can find joy in our discouragement. And I remember it so well because I was experiencing personally just a lot of discouragement. We all have one of those days, one of those weeks, or even one of those years. But even then, Christ can fill us with joy, which defies our circumstances. King David wrote in the Psalms, Weeping may stay for the night, but rejoicing comes in the morning. It's a beautiful verse to claim. Sometimes that night can seem very long. But as we rediscover this Christmas, the good news of great joy that is alive in us through Jesus is the strength that sustains us. We talked about uh, the miraculous stories of Elizabeth and Mary that are found in Luke 2. They were both united in the shared joy of their pregnancies. For Elizabeth, joy was a fulfillment of long dashed dreams of motherhood and, and a cultural shame because she had never been able to, to bear a child. For Mary, her joy was a celebration of being in the middle of God's greatest miracle. Mary knew that she would face ridicule and shame for her pregnancy, but in her encounter with Elizabeth, she, they both find the freedom of joy and rejoicing. For some of us, Christmas is typically a joyful season filled with songs and celebrations, traditions, and comforts. That may be a little different this year. For others, the expectations of Christmas joy have always served as reminders of deeper pain and disappointments and the lack of joy that we experience. And probably for most of us, Christmas brings a mixture of both. It is our hope that we will all discover, rediscover joy this Christmas as we choose to rejoice. As we return our focus to Jesus as we pour out our hearts to him, even, especially during our pain. He can transform our weeping into joy that lets us appreciate and enjoy the goodness of his greater work within us and in our world. Once again, another prayer for us written by the Apostle Peter. Though you have not seen him, you love him. Even though you do not see him now, you believe in him and are filled with an inexpressible and glorious joy. For you are receiving the end result of your faith, which is the salvation of your souls. These are powerful prayers that we want you to claim. And this past Sunday, on Christmas Sunday, we finished up with finding love in our differences. There's so much in our world that drives us apart. The love of Christ, though, runs deeper than our differences with a flood of grace and, and mercy and forgiveness that unites us. The desire for love is dominant in our culture. We long for it. We celebrate it. We even mourn when it's lost. We are captivated by love, but we struggle so badly to love each other on an individual and societal level. Instead of a culture that exemplifies love, often we are a country, a nation, a world filled with division and conflict and hatred. Despite our best intentions, our broken human nature divides us. However, Jesus is the bridge of love that unites us. He is the long-promised Messiah sent because God so loved the world that he allowed his one and only son to be born and then to be sacrificed for all of our sins and our shortcomings. And when he did, Jesus made the way for us to be restored into a relationship with God, who personified love, is love himself. 
As we look back at the cast of characters during that first Christmas, we saw how God gathered a varied group of different people to be involved in the arrival of his son. And we discovered how these people represented the barriers and the divisions that God was uniting. There were young and old and earthly and heavenly, lowly and noble, Jews and Gentiles, clean and unclean. Ultimately, there is God and humanity. As we discover and rediscover this Christmas, it's our prayer that we understand greater the depth of the love of Christ, the perfect love that allows us to experience the acceptance of God and the perfect love that removes our fears. And as this love washes over us and fulfills us from within, I pray that it propels us to reach across the divisions around us, even to our enemies with humility and forgiveness and grace. And like what the Apostle Paul wrote, I pray this prayer for us, that you being rooted and established in love may have power together with all the Lord's holy people to grasp how wide and long and high and deep is the love of Christ and to know this love that surpasses knowledge, that you may be filled to the measure of the fullness of God. What an incredible love. That is who our God is. This is our God born for you and for me. Amen. So Advent is about waiting, waiting for the hope, the peace, the joy, and the love, which ultimately means that Advent is about finding Christ in our world. Christ has come Amen. to change our world and us forever by his arrival in our lives. It was a humble and fragile birth, he came as one of us, able to understand everything that we go through, all of our longings, all of our struggles, all of our pain. Yet Jesus, human but divine, is God. He is hope, joy, peace, and love personified, here to restore these characteristics in us as a byproduct of restored life in relationship with God. Jesus is life rediscovered. Our friends, if you are struggling this year, asking, where is Jesus? Let me offer you this. Jesus is with you in our uncertainties, in our discouragements, in our differences, in our celebration, in our mourning, in our fears and our triumphs, in our brokenness, our healing, our sickness, and our health. He's in our life and in our death. Wherever you are, Jesus is there. He's working and he's moving. He's offering life and forgiveness. He's calling us to trust and to see beyond our immediate circumstances to him who is deeper, bigger, broader, wider, higher than anything we will ever experience in this life. Jesus is in our world. He is in our lives. He is Emmanuel, God with us for eternity. And he will never leave you. He will never forsake you. What an incredible promise for us to claim. And let me just quickly share with you what we're going to be leaning into come this new year. We've entitled this series called Remind Me Again. And we are going to be reflecting on these incredible promises that are going to lead us into 2021 and through 2021, beyond the pandemic, as we continue to claim the beautiful promises of God. But allow that one, that he will never leave you nor forsake you, be lodged in your heart and your mind during this season. Jesus is the discovery of Christmas. So let us run to him as did the shepherds of long ago, to encounter him, the fullness of him during this season. Let's worship and find renewal in his presence this year. Let's rediscover Christmas in the life he brings within us and around us. Christ has come. Christ is here among us. And Christ will come again. And as we think about that silent night, 
in these moments, we want to just take you on a journey as we sing that song together. And although we are separated, we want to encourage you to sing this very familiar song with McKinley and as Todd accompany her, accompanies her. Allow this to be a very special moment for you as you experience him on this, your silent night. God bless you. Friends, as you know, this part of our Christmas Eve service is always a very special moment where we, as a Northridge family, share together in the lighting of a candle. And so, Glenda and I, on your behalf tonight, as well as Felicia and Cam, have taken the liberty to already light your candle. Behind us is a, a sh shelves of 300 candles that represent each family of Northridge. And so we light ourselves from this Christ candle. Remembering you but most importantly, remembering our Christ. Wanting to live a life that allows his light to lead us, to shine for us, 
to allow us to take every step that we need to take that's in accordance to his perfect purposes and plan. And it's always our prayer that as you travel through these remaining days of this year, 2020, and move into 2021, that you will continue to allow the gospel message of his arrival. And as you prepare your hearts, as we move towards the Easter season, to allow the gifts that he came to provide to be there for you each and every day. We don't package them up. We don't, we don't lose account of what they are, but they're present for us. His hope, his peace, his joy, his love is available throughout all the time, not just at Christmas time. And so we celebrate with you as we share together in this prayer. This prayer will be on the screen for you to recite along with us, and we encourage you to do that. Almighty God, God, you have have made this this night holy holy by the the gift gift of of your your Son, born of the Holy Spirit and of Mary. Upon him rested all your grace. Through him has come all your mercy. Let us light shine within our hearts tonight even more brightly than it shines from the candles of this place. Help us to celebrate your everlasting love that you have for each one of us. Amen. Amen. Friends, the light has come. And we wish you Merry Christmas. God bless you. So as your pastors, both Glenn and I, stand with you. We stand with you to support you as you allow your light to shine. As you continue to remember that he is sovereign, that he is still on the throne. I share with you as a benediction tonight, prior to the last selection that will be shared, as part of his great commission to us, Jesus said this, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me, 
Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. May you let your light shine. God bless you, and we wish you a Merry, Merry Christmas. Christmas. So full is his face.